Steve Gordon. I'm chairman of the Friends of the Fieldhouse. We're a local group that raises money for different projects that go on at the museum here. Some of you, when you were little, may have participated in our Easter egg hunt. But today we're here for the Brachiosaurus find. And I'll turn it over to John. The Friends group donated $1,000 for the horses that dragged this out because we couldn't take trucks in on the BLM land where it was located. I'll let John tell you more of the story here. This is John Foster, our paleontologist at the Fieldhouse. Okay, thanks Steve. Um, everybody, why don't you come in close here so we don't have to echo as much. I think you'll be able to see and hear better. Um, there we go. Um, First of all, thank you for coming. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, and as Steve mentioned, John Foster, I'm the curator of uh, collections here at the Fieldhouse. And I just wanted to point out a few of the people here who were involved in the project. Tom Howes here with the nice camera taking photos. Um, was He's a volunteer for the Fieldhouse here, and he was down doing the collecting. I will show you a a uh, time lapse of the excavation a little bit later that Tom did with his GoPro when we were out there. Um, Rebecca Hunt Foster is doing the double phone um, videoing here. She's with the Park Service. She was on the excavation as well, helping us get this thing out of the ground. And the Bartlett's here were the key element. Um, their Clydesdales were the ones who got this thing out. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that process a little bit later on. Um, but the, the project that this thing came from was well, started about six years ago, and it was a cooperative project. I was at the Museum of Moab at the time. Uh, Bureau of Land Management was involved. Um, a colleague of ours at the Western University of Health Sciences out in Mount California was involved. And now that I'm at the Utah Fieldhouse, we're involved in this project as well. What happened was this an area in southern Utah where a private citizen was just out and noticed some bone in a relatively unexplored layer and geographic area of what's called the Morrison Formation, which is rock unit the Dinosaur National Monument it's in. Um, and a lot of the dinosaurs in the western U.S. come out of the Morrison Formation. Um, but where this guy had found this bone was down low, which is relatively unexplored, and it was an area that was fairly untouched. So we've been spending about five or six years out there documenting a bunch of different localities. And last May, we found something that was fairly rare. And unlike most of the bone that's out there, most of the bones out there is preserved in old river channels and so it's in the sand and gravel and the rock now is extremely hard and it takes forever to get stuff out and actually we haven't really excavated most of that we've been forced essentially to identify it in the, in the rock because it's so hard and it's in such thick units of sandstone that we can't really get it out this thing though we were lucky it was in a very soft rock so it was something that we were able to get out. Um, and this is the biggest thing that we found out there over the years. It's both literally the biggest in being six foot seven inches long, um, but it's the most important thing that we found so far. So um, if you guys want to give me a hand here, we'll pull the sheet off this guy and let you guys take a look at it. And feel free to kind of move in and take a close look at this as we continue to talk about it. Um, but one thing I need to point out here is that this thing is halfway through the preparation process. It was found in May. We collected it in October and since then we've been working on getting all the rock off of it and cutting the jacket down and we're about midway through the process that our next step is to clean this up, get the cracks glued back together, and then eventually we'll need to flip this thing over and work on the other side. 
just to orient you, uh, it is the right humerus, that is the right upper arm bone. So it's equivalent to this one in a diplodocus, but as you can see with this model of, of Brachiosaurus, it would of course be right here. This is a much taller animal, almost giraffe-like. Uh, neck is a little bit more upright. Front legs are a little bit longer. And you can see the difference in size between this guy and the right humerus and plugus. Um, just to orient you again, this is the proximal end, so that's the shoulder joint here. The elbow would be down here. And then this big knob of bone right here, which is a little bit out of place, is equivalent to this ridge right here. And what that did was it connected part of the uh, deltoid muscle here that kind of attached the chest. So that muscle that we attached to this and direct the direction right here, that's something that's involved in pulling the, the leg forward and inward. Do that. So let's see, just a little bit of history of Brachiosaurus here. Um, the first one ever found was found in what is now Grand Junction city limits out in western Colorado. Um, this is a guy, I believe, named Harold Menke, who was working with a guy named. Uh, Elmer Riggs at the Field Museum, and he was actually a photographer, but I think he got so excited about this one that he wanted to lie down next to it himself and have maybe Riggs take the photo. But this is another humerus from Brachiosaurus. This is the first one ever found. This was the year 1900. And then it went about 55 years before anybody found another one. And the other one was also found in western Colorado. Um, and then it's been 60 plus years since anybody's found a humerus of these things. So it's a pretty rare thing. This is only the third one of Brachiosaurus that's ever been found anywhere in the western US. Uh, and it's just a little bit smaller than the one in the photo there. Just to kind of indicate how rare this is, I said in an interview with somebody last night that I had kind of assumed that I was never going to see Brachiosaurus in the field because I'd been doing this for almost 30 years and people we were working with had been doing it for over 25 and in all these time, all that time, none of us had ever seen a Brachiosaurus in the field, so we figured it was unlikely that we would ever collect one. And then a friend of ours finds one. Um, just back in May. So this is just kind of a graph of some of the long neck dinosaurs like this out of the Morrison formation. The really common one here is a thing called Marisaurus. Uh, the Plotacus, this guy right here is this graph. And each of these have between 100 and 200 individuals known that have been found over the past 140 years or so. And the Brachiosaurus is in this little red box down here. There's only 10 of these things known in total. So it's outnumbered about 20 to 1 by some of the attacks of the Morrison Formation, uh, which is why it was such a surprise to see this thing. And this is only the uh, eighth locality for Brachiosaurus in the western US. It's a little hard to see from a distance, but each of these stars is locality for where they're known. There are four in Colorado, um, one up in Wyoming, one in way western Oklahoma, and there's one actually, not a humerus, but some pieces of rib and vertebrae um, from out by Jensen. It was found back in the 60s. And then our site is actually down here in the southern part of Utah. So it's only the eighth locality so far for these animals. Um, the other interesting thing about this is even though it's shorter than the other two Brachiosaurus out of the Morrison formation as far as the humerus goes, it's actually the fifth longest humerus of any animal that's ever been found on Earth. 
So it's a pretty big thing. And I joked in one of the press releases we did that it's actually taller than any member of the crew that collected it. And there were, I believe, about 16 of us that were on the group that, uh, that did it. When we brought it in, we found out that the jacket, uh, as we brought it in, it was a little over a thousand pounds total, which is why it was a lot of work to get out. Um, we've taken about 275 pounds of rock out of it, and we have a little bit more to go. Um, it was in some pretty rough and remote terrain, and so we could not get a car in there, and it was complete but exposed to the elements, and the more it sits out in rain and freeze thaw and all that, the more it would break up. So we knew we didn't want to leave it out over the winter. We had to get it out fast, so we didn't have time to get it out with the helicopter, and so what we decided was we needed some animals that this would be easy for. And that is when we contacted Bartlett's, and they agreed to bring Darla and Molly and Clydesdales out, and they helped haul it out. They actually did most of the work. Every element of this process that the humans had to do was difficult, time-consuming, and dangerous, and whenever we had the horses hooked up to it, everything was a breeze. So that was really the key. Um, if you guys want to come up later, when we're done, it, since it's um, kind of a small screen, but we do have a time lapse, the one that I mentioned that Tom had done on here. And I'll kind of start this and we can run this a few more times. But the time lapse basically shows at 10 times speed us collecting it over the course of two days. And it also shows a little bit of the process of, of walking the thing out of horses. Um, after we're done here, um, if you guys want to come outside, we'll move this thing outside. You can meet Darla and Molly. And we're going to have a picture of them with their prize here out uh, in front of the museum sign. Um, so come out and meet them if you'd like. Um, also tonight, we're going to have two videos that we're going to be showing in the auditorium. This is at 6 p.m. And we're going to be showing a documentary, at least the first two parts of a documentary called uh, Jurassic Reimagined, which is based on the work down in this area. Um, finally, thanks to the Bartlett's and Darla and Molly, and everyone who is involved in the project. And I have a list of our sponsors here as well. Um, friends of the Utah Field House funded the large part of the extraction. Um, there was also Western University of Health Sciences, Brian Ng himself, and the Canyonlands Natural History Association, plus our, uh, our permitting agencies that helped us out with all this. You guys can come up and look at some of this stuff as well. If you want to see it up close, there's also a reconstruction that Brian Ng did, the guy who found it and helped us get it out, um, showing Brachiosaurus with what the forelimb skeleton would have looked like and the humerus here as it would fit in to the animal. So you can take a look at that as well. Um, However, does anybody have specific questions for me or anyone else that was in on the crew? Yes. So this is the only bone you found so far of the Brachiosaurus? No, there were a few other fragments out there, uh, most of which we haven't really figured out exactly what they were yet. Um, at least one or two looked like sections of ribs. And it looks like there's another rib that's out there that we need to get this year. And then, believe it or not, the left humerus is in the lab also. It had eroded out several decades ago, at least probably, and had broken up into several large chunks and started washing down the hill. So we got all those chunks out. Um, obviously, it's not nearly as complete, um, but it's basically the right and left pair between the two of them. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay, thank you for coming. Please come up and take a look at this stuff. Take a look at it in closely. 
Um, if you want to watch the time lapse, it's here. And then we'll be having Darla and Molly out front so you guys can meet them too. They were kind of the stars of this thing. Just the you know feathered theropods that you get out of China. Apparently, it's throughout the group. It was likely they had stuff. Like that. <laughs> Some people are crazy enough to do that. Probably about the most interesting thing about this find, um, other than just that Brachiosaurus is very rare, is that there have only been two humeri of Brachiosaurus found previously. This is only the third one that's ever been found, and that's since, well, the past 120 years. So it's been over 60 years since anyone's seen one of these in the field. So it's particularly a rare element among a rare a rare beast. And the other thing that is neat about this one also is that it is very low in the Morrison Formation, so it seems to be potentially the geologically oldest Brachiosaurus that's ever been found. 